The original Demon Gaze was released in 2014 for the PlayStation Vita, and now we have its sequel, Demon Gaze 2, for both Vita and PS4. But is this one game that you should be gazing at, or is it more like a demonic disaster? Demon Gaze 2 is a DRPG, or Dungeon RPG. This means you have these first-person perspective, exploration-filled dungeons that you'll be crawling through battling monsters in a turn-based battle system. The story of Demon Gaze 2 takes place a few years after the original, with a separate cast of characters other than a few that make a return from the original, as well as a separate story, so you don't have to play the original to enjoy Demon Gaze 2. In this game, you're playing as a character who's working with a rebel group you end up getting captured and experimented on. After being released and getting back to your rebel group, you have no idea what's going on, but you have a new ability. The ability, the Demon Gaze. This allows you to interact with demons and get them to join your side. The game is pretty heavy on its story. You'll have a lot of scenes before and after a lot of the areas that you explore with each of the various characters. Most of the dialogue is decent enough. A few parts made me chuckle. And you'll have dialogue choices throughout, though, even though you'll get a bit of different reactions, didn't really seem to affect all that much in the scenes. Some of the other changes from the original game include the fact there's a lot less customization for your character, but now there are difficulty choices. So for those who are veterans of DRPGs, you'll be able to go right to a harder one and have a lot more of the challenge you come to know and expect from the genre, whereas if you're new to the genre, you can put it on the easier setting and have a much more accessible experience with a DRPG. Most of getting around the game is handled via menu. There's no open world or towns for you to explore. Other than when you're in a dungeon, you'll be selecting which part of the house you want to go to or what part of town that you want to visit. Your main objective for most of the game, while all your friends and other people in the rebel base are just kind of making sure the base is running, you're sent into these restricted zones, which basically work as the game's dungeons, where you'll have to go in and take over points of interest. After taking all of them over, a demon's lair will appear. If you enter the demon's lair and take on the demon and defeat it, you'll get it to then join your side and you'll be able to have it in your party. You can have up to five people in your party at one time, and there's 15 or so demons that you'll be able to get into your party, so there's a lot of mixing and matching you can do. Each of the demons have a certain route they're pretty much set to go, though, whether they're going to be more magic-based or more attack-based. Only your main character, which starts with all middle-of-the-road stats, can you really adjust to go any way that you want. Battles are pretty standard, but have some streamlined features. You'll be able to set up your attacks, use items, spells, but also you can have it set up that whatever you did the previous turn, you can instantly do again, so you can get through a lot of the smaller battles a lot quicker. You'll, of course, want to slow down when you make it to a boss fight. Equipment in the game is relatively standard. You have a decent variety of different weapon types. You have shorter and longer range weapons, as well as being able to have a variety of equipment. Certain characters can only use certain weapon types or only equip certain types of armor. What's cool, though, is when you have extra stuff that you're not going to be using, you can either sell it in order to buy other items, or you can end up turning it into ether and then use it to upgrade the stuff you're actually having equipped to your characters. Another cool way, though, that the game handles getting new equipment, though, is through the crystals in the dungeon. When you come across these, a lot of which are the points that you have to take over in order to get the Demon's Slayer to appear, you have to set a gem. The gems are all the range of different items and equipable things, and you can put up to three in a battle, but you have to have at least one. And this, when you end up completing the battle successfully, you'll get an item in that category. So this is a lot of way you'll be getting the better stuff throughout the game. Well, the game has a decent amount of the dungeons. I wish there were more variety to them. A lot of the dungeons you go into multiple times. There's locked doors in them that you can't get through the first time. You have to come back later. This ends up working basically as a second dungeon within a dungeon, since you'll end up getting another one of the demons. But still, I wish there were more overall dungeons instead of having to do farther ones into the same ones. There's also a fair amount going on in the base itself. You'll be able to set up furniture in your room, buy new rooms for the demons, and put them in their own individual rooms, making them happy with various pieces of furniture. You can then also go on dates with the demons by building affection with them. There's a touching minigame where you, if you touch them in the right spot, you build affection with them, as well as you get these dating cutscenes that end up playing out. And while there is that bit of fan service there, and a few touches here and there, for the most part, it's not really a fan service heavy game. From the technical side of things, though, the game ran smoothly. I didn't run into any major glitching, crashing, or slowdown of any sort. Demon Gaze 2 is available now on the PlayStation 4 for $49.99. It does have a platinum trophy. The game is also available on the PlayStation Vita for $39.99.
Overall, Demon Gaze 2 is a pretty solid DRPG. I do wish there were some more animations to the characters and the monsters. A lot of the dungeons kind of look stagnant in a lot of its design. Obviously, they're going for a very basic look, but even for that kind of appeal, it still felt like it could have used a bit more to it. If you're looking for a new DRPG though for your PS4 and Vita, this may be the one for you, and the added ability of difficulties will allow a lot of people to check out the game that maybe necessarily don't play a whole lot of DRPGs. With all that said though, I'm going to be giving Demon Gaze 2 a 7 out of 10. But anyway guys, it's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course I hope you enjoyed.